I am a planner. I hate uncertainty. I like to know how things are going to look tomorrow, a week from now, you know, maybe even in 10 years. You see, I plan so much that I can tell you guys, when this event is over, I'm going back to my dorm, submitting my algorithm's homework at 10.59 p.m., jumping into bed at approximately 11.05 p.m., giving me just enough time to watch one episode of Grey's Anatomy and go to sleep by midnight. I plan. You see, I'm that person who would rather know how the movie ends before even watching it. That's me. I love a good spoiler. And it's not because I'm scared of what's coming. It's that I just simply find comfort in knowing what is yet to happen. My logic is that if you can anticipate a curveball, then you can catch it. But I know this way of thinking is not always correct, because what happens when you're not ready? When something happens that you never see coming? And that's why I'm here today. I'd like to talk to you about a curveball that was thrown to me four years ago. And my story starts with one of the most important bones in the human body, the spine. Now this is exactly what a spine should look like, right? Nothing special. All right, but this is an x-ray of my spine. It's pretty cool, right? Now, I'm not a doctor, but I'm pretty sure like that's not correct. And I'm pretty sure spines should not resemble the letter S. S for scoliosis. And by the looks of this, you could probably guess what it means. Scoliosis is an abnormal curvature of the spine. All right, I first want to take you guys back to eighth grade with 13-year-old tall and awkward nerdy me. And if any of you remember your junior high experience, you're probably aware that middle school was all about being cool without realizing that you're really not. And let me tell you guys, I was the definition of 2012 cool. God bless puberty, y'all, all I'm saying. I sported all the good trends, thank you, Mom, for blue mascara, colored converse. I had pink braces and a hair feather. I wore the stupid little silly bands that you would trade off in class, you know what I'm talking about? I was hot stuff. But underneath all this coolness, I, was, I had another cool item, one that I was actually trying to hide, my back brace. This plastic, gaudy pink, bunny-printed waist contraption that, you know, made my non-existent boobs at the time very uncomfortable, and whose Velcro straps just kind of snagged on my good sweatshirts. I was diagnosed with scoliosis at age 13, and I was forced to wear this thing every day for 18 hours for two years straight. And it wasn't something I wanted to enter high school with, let alone sleep with that night, because it was just hella uncomfortable. But don't worry. My sweet 16 comes around, and I can take it off. And I'm like, hell yes, I can live my best life. No more back brace. My curve is fixed. <laughs> That's what I thought. A couple months pass. My mom pulls me out of high school one day for just a random checkup. I go in for some simple x-rays, you know, expecting my spine to look better than when it did at 13, because that was the plan. Dr. DeWald comes in. He pulls up my pictures on the screen. And for a second, I'm thinking to myself, I'm pretty sure they pulled to the wrong patient's profile, so if they can like change it, because that's, that is me. Haley Sky, Dara Kanavala, spine with a 36 degree curve is now at a 52. Cool. It's to the point now where my rib is very close to touching my lung, which I'm like pretty sure is not supposed to happen. My brace had failed me. So what's left now? An eight-hour thoracic spinal fusion surgery from the base of my neck to mid-back. I did not see this coming. And for those who are wondering, a spinal fusion is a surgical procedure that connects the vertebrae and takes out flexibility. So if you know what the game whack-a-mole is, I'm not going to lie, it's kind of what it's like. You slice open the back, you rough up the spine, you break it a little bit, you take a hammer and pound a series of rods and screws at the spine segments. Basically, you take a bendy straw and you straighten it. That's what they did to me. So I'm not going to brag, but I'm kind of a bionic woman. Inside of me, I have two rods and 19 screws of titanium. And let me tell you, going through airport, airport security is not fun because I can't go through the metal detector. And so basically, I have to be patted down every time I travel, and it's not fun at all. But with that aside, 
I'm not telling you this for sympathy or pity or to craft a sob story like the ones you hear on reality TV. I'm telling you this because of the part that came after, the getting back up part, the chapter in my life that I really could not predict. Because the least expected challenges in life can teach you the most about yourself, about your capabilities, about everything you could never have planned for in the first place. For me, in my situation, I discovered resilience. Now, I was well aware that a lot of the things I planned to do after surgery would not be simple, but I already had this mindset that everything is gonna be terrible. I played in the drum line in high school, and I thought to myself, how am I gonna go back to marching band and carry my 20-pound bass drum on the field? Outside of school, I work as a recording artist in the music industry, and the first thing I thought was, how am I gonna perform on stage again when I can barely walk up the stairs? And also, I'm a signed professional model with Wilhelmina. I've been working in the modeling industry since I was 13, and I thought to myself, there's no way I can go back. I have this huge back scar on my spine. No one's gonna wanna Photoshop that out. And all in all, I thought to myself, how am I gonna deal with all of these plans that I didn't make? Now, I'm sure each and every one of you has asked yourself that question before, because I can name a thousand examples where things don't go our way, like not getting the internship, or when an Uber cancels on you last minute, or the university bus does not come on time, or getting ghosted by someone you thought you had a real connection with. I learned that as much as you plan for things to work out a certain way, you know, you really can't control the future. And sitting around with self-pity is not gonna do anything either. When I stopped feeling bad for myself, I learned to embrace the unexpected for what it is, because you can't change that part and then to learn from it, and then to keep moving, because if we don't do these things, we will always find ourselves in a position of wasting time, either stuck or sitting around wishing things were different. I'm lucky to say that this is me today. I'm grateful to have come out of surgery with no pain, zero complications, my breathing is better. And fun fact, before surgery, I was five feet, 10 inches. When I walked out, I was six feet. Not that I needed to be any taller, but you know, I'll take it. <laughs> Quite literally, this surgery straightened me out physically, but it straightened out my mindset more. I ended up doing everything I had planned I would not be able to do. But to get back to doing these things like marching band, modeling, singing, boxing, yoga, the things that I loved and that came easy to me took many, many tries now. It wasn't until I changed my attitude that I actually got up and you know, I tried. I had to push myself for months to relearn how to do a push-up, and then how to jog, and then how to run. I want to be straight with you. These weren't immediate triumphs for me. You know, in fact, the opposite. I went back to marching band. I put on my drum harness, but I could barely withstand the weight. Or my first gig after surgery, I was opening up for a major rock band, and I could barely project my voice on stage. And I went back to modeling, but some jobs and casting directors weren't looking to cast a girl with a back scar. But the more I failed, the more motivation I felt to get back up. And as a result, it produced a better version of myself than I could never have planned out in the first place. I wrote an original song called Wild Side. It was picked up by Day, uh, Teen Vogue in 2015. A year later, I was featured in the actual August issue on stands. I got to talk about the beauty of scars and scoliosis. And there's me in marching band, getting ready to march on the field with my bass drum. <laughs> and these are all great things, and I am very grateful. But still, I don't know what will happen tomorrow, or next week, or in 10 years. What I do know is that I have the power to do something in spite of whatever does happen. So why should you guys care what I'm saying? Well, we live in a world where the unexpected is a part of our everyday lives, personal or societal. We see another mass shooting in the headlines. There's changes going on right now with government policy, job layoffs. The only constructive way we can handle these situations is how we react to them. So my advice to you is this, and the takeaway, when you are faced with a difficulty in life that you never planned for, just stop for a moment. Breathe, feel the air in your lungs, and take a look around you. There is always something in every day to be grateful for. 
And sometimes that's just realizing the most basic fact that you're still here and standing. There's a Steve Jobs quote that I found, and I think it perfectly sums up what I want you to ask yourselves when listening to my story. Steve Jobs says, if today were the last day of my life, would I want to do what I'm about to do today? And so I asked myself, do I want to dwell on what could have been if I didn't have surgery, if I didn't have scoliosis, if things were just a little bit different for me? Do I want to stay mad? When I found my answer to be no, I understood this part, that we have the inner power to control what we think, what mood we feel, and what state of mind we have at any given moment. It's about asking how we can remind ourselves that who is in charge of us is ourselves. Resilience starts with mindset. Getting back up only begins when we learn to purposely choose to work against our inclination to accept the negative. Because the matter of fact is that eventually everyone will be dealt a crappy handful of cards at some point. I think it comes down to deciding whether or not you want to quit and sit on the sideline or play the game with what you've been given. If I understood this at age 16, perhaps my recovery wouldn't have been so dreadful and it wouldn't have taken me years later to realize how something unexpected could become a blessing. The least expected challenges can teach us the most, but we have to be open to learning from them. So I challenge you to make adjustments to your plans because things change, people change, crap happens and life gets in the damn way. I was positive that after two years of wearing a back brace, my scoliosis curve would be corrected as planned. Now I have a fused spine and I'm cool with it because my surgery built resilience in me. I've taught myself to tell myself time and time again, you fell, so what? How will you pick yourself up gracefully and what will you do in spite of it? These are the questions that we should be asking ourselves. You know, because at times we tend to believe certain things in life are impossible because they aren't easy. Running a marathon, long distance relationships, forgiveness, doing a downward dog with a bionic spine. I'm realizing more and more that we bounce back easier when we can embrace the presence of the unexpected. And I try to apply this mindset in all aspects of my life, you know, in situations that I could never have planned for, including death of a loved one, breakups, falling when I ski, and job rejection. It is what happens after hardship that defines our true character. A testament to how we as human beings can go along with life when it gives us no choice but to move forward. So the next time you're trying to be like me and plan out the next chapter in your book, maybe don't. Perhaps you should wait until life gives you a story to write about. Because what we do next after the curveball is something we are truly in control of. Thank you very much.